In this video, we'll cover preparing and setting up your frame for building. We'll talk about preparing the carbon fiber, installing the motors, and installing the power distribution board. These videos accompany our text series on PropWash.com, where you can follow the process step by step with pictures. Links to all the relevant articles can be found in the description section of each of these videos. So after we've assembled all of our materials, it's time to prepare the frame for assembly. Our first step is to sand down the edges of our frame. This is an optional step, but we recommend it to improve the overall lifespan of your frame. So why do we do this? It serves two purposes. First, it smooths any potential rough edges or burrs that might be left over from the manufacturing process. Now most quality frames won't be affected here, but this process can help prevent accidentally cutting yourself on frame edges when picking up the frame later. More importantly, however, it provides some protection against carbon fiber delamination. Now, delamination is when the individual sheets of carbon fiber start to split and come apart. This can occur from repeated crashing and damage to the quad, which, you know, is a general part of flying. If you're pushing yourself to do race or do freestyle, you're going to crash a lot while practicing. However, if your frame starts to become delaminated from these crashes, it's going to severely impact the lifespan of your frame and make for some nice sharp edges to snag your fingers on down the road. Your goal here is to use a metal file to sand down the edges slightly so that they become rounded off or dull to the touch. Be careful though, carbon fiber dust is toxic and you should take precautions while undergoing this process. You can use a sink with running water, which is what we're doing here to prevent the dust from becoming airborne. Or you can do this process outside with a dust mask on. Obviously do this away from other people or pets. If this is your first frame, we recommend doing a test fit for all the components. This will give you an idea of how everything will look when completed and allow you to see how everything lays out on the frame. Now you don't necessarily need to screw everything in or wire anything together here. This is more of a mental checkpoint for you so you can picture how everything should come together by the end of the build. Next, if your quad frame has arms that need to be attached to the frame, attach them now. If your frame is one solid piece of carbon fiber like ours, you can skip this step. After you've assembled the bottom plate of your frame, we can start securing the motors. Before we secure the motors to the frame, we're going to want to separate out the hex bolts that came with our motors. Now for the most part, the motors will include way more bolts than what you need, and they might also include a few different sizes. We like to unpack all the motors and use one leftover box to hold all the bolts that we need for the process. It just keeps things more organized while we're undergoing the build. Be careful here though. Longer bolts can pierce the wiring and other delicate components inside the motor, cause a short, and leave you with a dead motor, which obviously nobody wants. Take a look at the underside of your motor before installation to check for loose wiring or other components close to where the bolt would connect. All right, now that we selected the correct bolts for our motors, we want to make sure that they stay secured for the foreseeable future. Whenever securing motors, be sure to use Loctite. Now Loctite's a thread locker that will help prevent the bolts from falling off our quad mid-flight. We do this because over time, the vibrations from the motors can dislodge the bolts, which would make for a very bad day flying. Since Loctite's a relatively expensive consumable and usually comes in really small bottles, we like dabbing a little bit on a piece of plastic or using a water bottle cap to make an easy dipping tray. This makes applying it to the bolts much easier. Finally, line up the motors with the motor wires facing inward along the arm, select one of your bolts, dip in a little bit of Loctite, and screw it into the motor through the frame's bolt holes on the bottom of the frame. We recommend fitting each bolt in a crisscrossing pattern. Put one bolt in, then add the adjacent bolt, and so on around the motor. Once all the bolts are secure, tighten them down in the same pattern. Be careful here though. A lighter touch is much better. You don't want to accidentally strip any of the threads. Next, you want to make sure that the circular bearing holding the motor shaft is centered and moves without any resistance. If the motor is hard to turn and you notice the bearing or shaft sliding against the carbon fiber, you're going to have to remove the motor and adjust the frame. Now 99% of the time you shouldn't have an issue here, everything should fit and spin correctly, but we have seen it happen. If you have to adjust the frame, you can use a drill or dremel and adjust the carbon fiber as needed. Now repeat this process for the other motors. After securing everything, you should have all four motors secured with the motor wires aligned along the arms of the frame. As a final check, look in the body of the motors to see if your bolts are touching anything inside the motor. Mainly, we want to check if the bolts are touching any of the gold motor windings. If anything is touching, remove the bolt and use a smaller one or loosen the bolt slightly. Next, we'll secure the power distribution board, which is usually abbreviated PDB, to the frame. We use the PDB to easily provide power to all the components on our quadcopter. So one thing to keep in mind that we haven't stressed yet and hasn't been a factor is that carbon fiber is electrically conductive. You can easily short out components by placing them directly on the carbon fiber frame. Thus, 
will never secure a circuit board directly to the frame itself. The PDB is especially susceptible as it's distributing the battery voltage to all the components on the frame. So instead of securing the PDB directly to the frame itself, we use small M3 nylon standoffs to raise the PDB off the frame. You can get nylon standoffs at most hardware stores and Amazon. As we've said before, the assembly guide has a whole list of components and where you can find and buy them. A link to the written guide can be found in the video description. To secure the nylon standoffs to the frame and the PDB, you can use any bolt or nut. Most standoff kits come with nylon nuts that you can use to secure the bottom of the standoff to your frame. You can then use a standard M3 bolt to secure the PDB on top of the standoff, or you can use another standoff to create an additional platform that you can use to stack the flight controller on top of the PDB. And that's exactly what we're going to do for this build. You don't need to apply Loctite here as it's going to be ineffective on the nylon standoffs. And finally, if your frame came with aluminum standoffs to connect to the top frame plate, you can simply screw them into the frame using the bolts that came with your frame. The positioning of these standoffs should be pretty clear, but if you need a little bit of help, put the top plate on top of the bottom plate and screw in the standoffs in the matching holes. Basically, the standoffs connect the two plates. We like adding the aluminum standoffs early as they'll help us lay out our components and show us where we can and can't run wires. This isn't required, but we recommend doing so to make fitting everything easier the first time. Obviously, you don't have to secure the top plate at this point as we still have a bunch of components to wire in. And with that, we are done assembling the frame. In the next video, we'll discuss installing our ESCs. Again, check the video description for links to the written guide, as well as links to the other videos in the series. The written guide will also have links to any of the products that we mentioned in these videos. You can also click on the annotations or cards on screen to go to the next video. We'll see you there.